gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back again. Now, I have great pleasure, without much ado, we have a little introduction. We have great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Slajina Velko, who is an MD. He is, she was born in Macedonia. She was raised in Serbia and she has worked as a medical doctor for United Nations and also as an emergency doctor in Kuwait. And now she is giving presentations and, and doing jobs. Uh, her career now is a medical development manager. She has undertaken that mission to educate people about healthy life and you know how specifically important it is in the modern life. Without much ado, let's welcome, let's put our hands together to welcome. that I don't earn money from this what I do. So I don't earn any money. Hinge, 
means they can open mouth up and down only. Why? Because they jump on the cow, they, they tear the meat, they swallow. What is happening with uh, herbivores, like a camel, horse, cow, and humans, we have sliding jaw. Jaw can go left and right for grinding, grinding more uh, grains. Okay, so uh, also about teeth. Uh, carnivores, they have fanged over of mandibula, uh, they have very sharp teeth, you know, instead of molars, and we have molars for grains and vegetables. So, uh, you know, just for comparison, you imagine, you know, because we are made by God, you know, to eat plants. Like, imagine that we are uh, in a nature, you know, without uh, any weapon to kill animals, like uh, God didn't design a weapon together with us. You know, imagine that you jump on the cow and, I mean, uh, to try to tear the meat from the cow. You cannot, because you're not designed by God to do this. This is not natural. And also, when you see the cow on the field, do you salivate like a wolf? No. no, because we are not designed for this. You know, wolf, when he sees the cow, he salivates because he's hungry. This is his food. And we don't salivate. We salivate on apples and on the... Uh, yes. Uh, regarding acidity, carnivores, they have 20 times higher acidity than uh, herb, uh, plant eaters. And in this, so they can digest meat. What is happening with the cat when she eats meat? You know, she have immediately in the mouth, she have acidity. So she starts digestion in the mouth. Okay? In the stomach, they have 20 times higher acidity. They digest the meat, which is very hard to digest. What is happening with us? When we eat meat, we don't have acid in the mouth. And we have very, slow acidi very small acidity in our stomach. So, meat is not digesting, meat is putrefying, means <coughs> dissolving, G getting bad, actually. And because intestinal length in, carn in uh, carnivores is very short, so they get out all, all this meat very quickly in a few hours. So, because meat is poisonous, they don't become poisonous. Nature made this. But uh, in our, our stomach and our camel stomach, we need uh, <coughs> to stay for three days. <coughs> Why? Because we have long intestines, and meat requires three days to pass through these intestines. So if you want to imagine what is happening in, in your stomach when you eat meat, just put a piece of meat on a kitchen table, uh, on a room temperature, and see what is going to happen after three days. This is the same in your stomach. The same happens. So, uh, you know, all this uh, sulfur and all this acidic acid which is coming from the putrefying, we absorb in our body. These are poisons. Uh, what is in the meat you eat? Okay, let's see. If you eat meat, what is in the meat you can find in the uh, shops? First of all, you can, uh, a scientist, Stanley Prusiner, he got Nobel Prize for uh, invent, uh, discovering the primes. Primes are infective proteins, and uh, 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 they cannot be killed on 1,000 uh, degrees centigrade. So how, uh, actually, uh, this is how cows got mad cow disease, because they ate uh, yeah, I didn't explain how cows are <coughs> fed, actually. Uh, they collect dead animals, they cook them, they dry, dry them, and they melt. So we call this animal flour or bone meat. So when cows consume this bone meat, they go to these primes, and they go to make cow disease. You see, in the nature, there is no mistake, because cows is designed to eat grass, and when they feed cow with the same species, with meat, then they become sick. This is nature. So what happened in humans when they eat such a meat? They got Jacob's Kreutzfeldt disease, which is the same like mad cow disease, but another name. And this is kind of dementia. Okay. So next thing, uh, they feed cows with hormones. Uh, why? You know, to, to be profitable, to get, uh, you know, big cows quickly. So, but what is happening with us when we eat such a meat? When you feed your children with those meat, 
Then they got early puberty, 50 years house with hormones. Uh, why? You know, to, to be profitable, to get, uh, you know, a big house quickly. So, but what is happening with us when we eat such a meat? When you feed your children with those meat, then they got early puberty. 50 years ago, children uh, got, uh, were getting puberty around 16, 17, which is normal because they are ready mentally and physically for, for the adult life. But nowadays, children get puberty around 10, 11. What are enzymes? Uh, we have three types of enzymes. First en type of enzyme is enzymes from the food. Every food, living food, have their own enzymes. Second enzymes, they, uh, second group of enzymes are digestive enzymes from pancreas, from stomach, and uh, 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 these enzymes are actually just helping digestion. And third type of enzymes are metabolic enzymes. And metabolic enzymes, they are in the cells, in the brain, kidney, heart, and they are fuel for the cell. So let's see what enzymes from the food do. Actually, all enzymes. Enzymes is taking a piece of food, breaking a piece of food into small parts which can be absorbed. And our body then absorbs these uh, nutrients. What is happening if you don't have enough enzymes? All this unbroken food will stay in your gut and will uh, feed, actually, will be base, foundation for fungus. You know, all people who eat, almost all people who eat uh, uncooked uh, cooked food and uh, animal products, they have fungus because they feed fungus with this cooked food, with these huge molecules. <laughs> Sources of enzymes, you have all uncooked food, fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts. What cooked food does, this is very important to understand, digestive leukocytosis. 1930s, Dr. Paul uh, Kochakov uh, from Lausanne, Switzerland, he did research, you know, because we have this problem, digestive leukocytosis means when you eat food, immediately the level of White blood cells, leukocytes, is raising. And when we have leukocyte level raising, when, when we're sick, when we have infection, correct? So, he was, you know, to him something was str or strange there. You know, how comes that when we eat food, we get this uh, digestive leukocytosis? Cooked food. So, he was cooked, I mean, food, because that time they didn't know about. And then after research, you know, he was feeding people, patients with this, that uh, uh, type of food. And then when he started to feed uh, uh, people with uncooked food, raw food, he didn't have digestive leukocytosis. White blood cells were peaceful. So he was, uh, from that time, we don't have digestive leukocytosis anymore, but we have pathological leukocytosis. means that when you eat cooked food, you're in a pathological state. You're sick. So, and of course, this is suppressing the immune system because dry blood cells are going to fight cooked food and you don't have enough enzymes to, to allow it to fight another problem. Cooked destroys proteins. 50% of proteins are destroyed by cooking. Vitamins, minerals, chlorophyll, and damages fats. Pesticides become more toxic. Oxygen is lost, free radicals are formed, and fibers are destroyed by cooking. Quickly ferments, cooking fo cooked food quickly ferments and putrefy in the intestinal tract, and this is why we have body odor and halitosis, which means bad breath. Otherwise, we will not have. Uh, is a good soil for bacterial growth? We already discussed. Arteries, nerves, spinal cord, and the tissue become hardened, prematurely old, so we get. Uh, uh, is, I mean, we, we get old before. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Decrease alertness, efficiency, productivity, and causes allergies and obesity. How cooked food causes allergies? You know, when you cook food, when you cook your food, then uh, this cook uh, by cooking, you don't have any more the small molecules which are made by nature. You have big molecules like in coagulation and proteins, they stick together 
and the body cannot recognize them because they are big, they are not, because we are natural and cooked food is not anymore natural because it's changed. So immediately body recognizes this big molecule like something foreign, it's not what we find in the nature and produce antibodies <coughs> to fight and this producing uh, antibodies is actually allergy. And how uh, cooked food uh, causes obesity? <coughs> You know, when you eat cooked food, body doesn't get any nutrition, correct? Everything, almost everything is killed. All enzymes are killed. So, because of this, body immediately after your lunch start to think about the next supply, next meal, because there is nothing in the body. So, you constantly eat, you know, and this constant eating, pouring calories in your body and no nutrition is causing obesity. You know, people ask me how I can get all nutrition from raw food, you know. So, but body will soon adjust to this another situation because the body is getting enough nutrition and doesn't require more. Okay? Raw food. What you get from raw food? Uh, uh, raw food is full of enzymes, vitamins, minerals, proteins, chlorophyll, and good fat. Uh, quickly and easily is ingested. There is no putrefication, means no body odor. Uh, no tired feelings uh, after meal. You don't feel that you want to sleep. You want to run after your meal when you throw food. And you don't sleep, I mean, you sleep like five, uh, six hours maximum. Uh, metab metabolism, efficiency, and the ability to absorb increases because your gut change completely. Uh, no diseases. And you have peace of mind because you know that you cannot get any disease. Uh, raw food boosts life, you know, more strength, energy, and stamina. You know when you put something what is dead in your body, you know, killed, something what is killed, you cannot expect to boost life in your body. But when you put something what is life in your body, this will boost life. Let's compare our body with the car. One car is designed to run 300,000 kilometers on a gas, for example. But if you put in the same car diesel, then car will run 100,000 kilometers. Because you put something what is too oily. It's the same with our body. You know, when you put something what is too oily, and this is animal <coughs> fat, then you run three times less. You know. Scientists, they said, they examined people who live long, who lived 120 years of age. They, they, uh, they researched that topic and they said that every one of us is capable to live without any disease up to 120. But because of food we eat and lifestyle we live, we live much shorter. Uh, there are people who can live more than 100. And one of this group of people in our Hunzas. These are people who live in, on Himalayas, on a border between uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. Uh, people who eat raw food and dried food, they don't have electricity, they don't have refrigerators, they dry their food and they eat their enzymes, because in dry food you also have enzymes. And uh, they eat a little bit of meat, but they eat meat just for the feast. And this meat which they get, you know, it's from the Himalayas. They, they, they're not from the farms. They don't have hormones and, and this bad stuff. And uh, they don't have money. They don't have jobs. They're very happy people. And there is... <laughs> <laughs> Something very important. Uh, Dr. Dean Orlich from uh, Institute in California, he did research and he put a group of people on vegetarian diet, some exercises, some meditation, and what he found, they don't, they, they get well from all these diseases they had, but not only that, 500 genes were changed, including 48 that were turned on and 453 genes were turned off. This means that hereditary factor is not anymore valid, means that you can switch off any gene you want just by three months eating and living by following the, the God's law, you know. And what he said, in just three months I can change hundreds of my genes simply by changing what I eat and how I live. It's pretty exciting. This is uh, 
one of the uh, raw food uh, uh, map pyramids. And what you can see that we have uh, green vegetables, fruits, sprouts, nuts, and seeds. But on the bottom, it's water. First, we have to take water. Why water is so important? Because we are made by 75% of our body is water, and 85% of our brain is water. So when uh, you don't have enough water, let's examine how we can improve heart, all heart, almost all heart problems and high blood pressure. Instead of getting pills to decrease level of uh, diuretics, to decrease level of, uh, of uh, liquid in your body, uh, you actually need more liquid. Why? Because when we don't have enough liquid in the body, our body, in order to supply all body with the blood, because there is not enough uh, blood in, in the body, then our body will constrict blood vessels to get yeah, everywhere. So this constriction and also thick blood, because we don't have enough liquid, will actually cause high blood pressure and all other heart problems. How you can, increase, how you can improve your back pain, let's say? Because there is a disc, very soft disc, which is mainly made of liquid between two vertebrae in your, in your spine, okay? So when you don't have enough water, this disc will shrink and will slip between two vertebrae and will press the nerve and you get a pain. When you drink more water, this disc will plump, come into the place and no pain. And also cholesterol, you can decrease cholesterol, how? You know, cholesterol is natural product of the body. So cholesterol is produced by liver and we need cholesterol. Cholesterol is essential for producing hormones. And not only that, wall of the cell is made by cholesterol. <coughs> so, when you don't have enough liquid in the body, then the body will uh, uh, open a little bit of pores on the cell wall to, uh, and a liquid leak out of the, uh, the cell to supply the body with the liquid. So, in order to stop this, because the body is shrinking, cell is suffering, so in order to stop this process, body is producing more cholesterol to build the wall, to stop leaking of the liquid. So drink more water and decrease your cholesterol. Um, <coughs> health myths. People ask me what about soy, you know, shall we... No, soy is uh, uh, actually dangerous food. You know, soy have uh, hormones, uh, huge amount of hormones with, which can actually cause early puberty if you give your child to eat anything uh, from soy. But also in adults, soy can cause uh, breast and prostate cancer and also very often soy is a cause of hypothyroidism. Uh, <coughs> by the way, 99% of soy is genetically modified and it's very dangerous to eat anything what is genetically modified. Uh, if you can get some fermented soy, non-genetically modified, like people in China, they eat only fermented uh, soy, like miso, like tempeh, then it's okay. <coughs> and amino acids. We have all amino acids in plant food. And we uh, are also <coughs> able to store amino acids in our body and to combine them. So in a few days. If you eat today some food and after three days your body will com combine these amino acids, vitamin B12. This is really help me, a huge, I mean, big help me. You know, they always say that vitamin B12 you get only from animal products. This is not true uh, because we don't find vitamin B12 in animal products nor in plant products. Vitamin B12 is produced by microorganisms. Um, small microorganisms who live, like all other animals, which are plant eaters, who live in our guts, in nasopharyngeal passages, in our mouth, and we have enough. I always check my vitamin B12 level, and it's excellent, and I never take my, uh, my uh, supplements of vitamin B12. And also genetically modified food, be, be aware. What about water? You know, first and the most dangerous thing you have to be aware is uh, fluoride. Fluoride is neurotoxin and it's rat poison. 
So, you know, fluoride was used in the Nazi camps and the Russian gulags uh, to decrease a number of guards. They decreased from 100 to 20. How? Because uh, prisoners, they start to obey. When they get fluoride, they obey. They don't want to escape. They just do whatever they tell them. So, and flu fluoride was introduced into the tap water, bottled water, toothpaste in after the Second World War in uh, America, Canada, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand. Most European countries, they refused fluoridation because they knew this is an extremely to to uh, high toxin. So, what actually fluoride is doing? You see, when they introduced water, uh, fluoride in the water, they said that they had excuse that actually fluoride is good for the teeth, for prevention. But it's this, this is disproven, you know. Even in a Scientific American uh, issue, January 2008, there is an article, scientific article, about actually that fluoride is causing fluorosis. This is a disease of the tip, you know, not protecting, but causing a disease. And not only that. The, the, the most, uh, the biggest consequence of fluoridation of water is calcification of the pineal gland. Pineal gland is the most important gland in our body and uh, it's producing hormone melatonin. If you don't, when the gland is calcified, you don't have enough melatonin, then you get depression and lethargy and you don't want to live. Okay? And you cannot perform any job, you know, with your, your full capacity. So, also, fluoride is causing brain holes in a white matter and decreasing IQ of our children. Infertility, too. Uh, bones, you can see on the picture. Spine, you know. Uh, on the left side is normal spine. On the right side is spine, which is exposed to fluoride. And also asthma. Uh, and also fluoride is added in the drugs because only fluoride can pass brain membrane and other uh, chemicals they cannot. So they combine with fluoride so the, the drug can pass brain membrane. First sign of toxicity <coughs> by fluoride are achy joints, fatigue and memory problems. Okay. Uh, how you can get rid of uh, fluoride in the water? There is a, you can buy some unfluoridated water, which you cannot find easily here, but there is also a very osmosis filter, and you can buy in the major cities, and also in Kobar, you can find a shop with a reverse osmosis uh, filter, and this is the only filter can remove fluor fluoride from the water. What other dangers we have in food? Aspartame. Aspartame is artificial sweetener. And we have in a huge amount, especially in low uh, sugar food, which you consume, you know, almost every day if you eat industrial packed food. So artificial as aspartame uh, is actually, uh, you can find it soft drinks, <coughs> drugs, and it's causing brain lesion, holes in the brain, and sclerosis multiplex. It is proven that one of the major reasons of sclerosis multiplex is aspartame. Second poison is MSG. MSG is monosodium glutamate. And this is uh, actually a uh, uh, spice which they use to enhan enhance the... Can we answer the we can, question? We call it as Ah, okay. Okay, thank you. So, it's extremely, extremely dangerous. You can see on the right picture how these white areas are actually dead brain. And it's, co it's completely destroying brain. And you need 75% of your brain to be destroyed to feel it. So never ever take this, this uh, and usually you find in the restaurants, because if, if you put MSG in the waste, it will taste, taste good. Okay, and this uh, coping learning problems, memory problems, numbness, blindness, depression, and, uh, and, and so on. After eating uh, food with MSG, you can feel cloudy, and I'm sure that you feel sometimes like this after eating your food in a restaurant, bad concentration, difficulty in logical thinking, and early signs, uh, these are the early signs of MSG intoxication, but sometimes we have cardiac arrest. People can die from MSG. Uh, microwave is killing your food, completely killing enzymes. So, 
I'm glad you agree. And you don't have to have it in the house also because it's cooking your body too. This is strong uh, radiation. Uh, you know, the problem with diseases is acid. You know, everything you eat like meat, milk, eggs, cooked food, and all industrial food, please pay attention, all industrial food, everything you buy in a box is, is very toxic, extremely toxic. And its product is acid. So acid is cause of almost all diseases. If you have alkaline blood, you cannot be sick literally from anything. So now our normal pH of the blood is 7.35 to 7.45. If you are in this, uh, you can, you are okay. If you are acidic, you have a problem. You have some disease, but it's not yet uh, on the surface. Normal, you, how you can check your morning urine, I mean your pH, pH you can check your morning pH uh, urine, which has to be 6 to 6.5 with the pH strips you buy in uh, pharmacy. Uh, there is an oncologist, uh, university professor, Dr. Tullio Simoncini in Rome, Italy, and what he did, you know, he has his own clinic in Rome, and he is treating cancer, uh, with baking soda. For example, he treats a colon cancer in six days with baking soda. Just washing colon twice daily with solution of baking soda. Because it is easy. Colon cancer is a fungus. And you just wash with the baking soda because baking soda is the best medication for a fungus. And in six days people are going home. And I can provide you with uh, his website and his videos, his lectures, and you can see with your own eyes. This is Dr. Noreen Day. She was uh, a chief of, 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 uh, of uh, orthopedic surgery at San Francisco General Hospital and university professor, medical professor. She got breast cancer, she rejected all standard therapies, Western therapies, and she just uh, ate food, raw food, she followed God's law, and she is now still healthy and alive 18 years after diagnosis cancer. <laughs> but not only that, we have another our friend, our neighbor from, uh, from Alcobar, Renaud, uh, Canadian, uh, French Canadian, he did the same, you know, he got PSA, which is a, a, a marker which is indicating prostate cancer. So he had, a, uh, he's around 60s, and uh, he had high blood pressure, cholesterol, and all this, you know, he was going through biopsy and starting to schedule operations and stuff. And he came one day to, to our doors and his uh, door, and he said, okay, what to do? Do you have something? I told him, you know, what to do. I, I told him what I'm telling you now. And he said, uh, well, uh, this is too much, I'm a manager, I cannot do this, you know, all this raw food, juicing, salads, you know, it's too much. So he left. After one week, he came again, and from that day, he followed. And just in, in two and a half weeks, he got rid of high blood pressure in one month of cholesterol, and in three months, his PSA was from 4.9, uh, dropped to 3.5, and above 4 is dangerous. So he is not anymore sick, just with raw food. <laughs> this is important to understand. Causes of almost all chronic diseases. There are two causes only. First is nutrition deficiency. Because we don't eat raw food, raw vegetables and fruits, we don't get enough nutrition. So this is one thing. And second thing is toxicity. You put so much toxins into your body and body cannot perform his normal natural function. And what are the treatments of, of this, of almost all diseases? Natural juices. We said that the first cause of diseases is not enough nutrition. It means we have to flood our body with juices to get more nutrition. And, uh, uh, but raw juices, squeezed juices, fresh juices, and second treatment is detoxification, means enema, washing of the colon. Why? It's detoxification. <coughs> you know, when people get the cancer, for example, they get on a good diet, and uh, they, uh, they are really good, doing good, but all these toxins, all this cancer, which is digesting from uh, raw food, because 
raw enzymes are digesting cancer, and cancer is getting out through our colon. But these toxins are again absorbed through the colon <coughs> and getting into his blood. So he killed himself with these toxins. So this is important in a really severely ill people to in the same time when they are going through juicing and good diet to wash their color because all these toxins are accumulating there. Uh, the effect of bad food. Many people have, you know, on the left side is a normal colon, on the right side we have damaged colon. Many people have damaged colon. Why? Because all this cooked food and these poisons, we, they, call, they, they cause inflammation. Inflammation means that our colon is infla uh, it's, uh, swollen. So when colon is swollen, then the, the walls touch each other and you have, you know, these uh, constrictions and, and problems. And also, because we have so much waste in our colon, then colon is dropping down and cannot really clean very nicely. So cleaning of the, of the colon is very important. Sorry? Okay. You can prevent and treat cancer, sclerosis multiplex, fibromyalgia, diabetes type 1 and 2, atherosclerosis, high blood pressure, skin problems, acne, neurodegenerative diseases, inflammatory diseases, vision, vision problems, and many others. So just to tell you that Western medicine have actually three type of treatments, let's say for cancer. We have chemo, radio, and operations. Okay, so chemo is causing, uh, it's killing bone marrow. And if you give a chemo to, to a healthy person, what will happen with this healthy person? Will become sick. So we give to sick person and we expect to, to become well. You know, you kill bone marrow and you kill also some malignant cells, but next time when malignant cells start to uh, multiply again, there is no immune system to fight back. And also about radiation, about uh, radio, you know, this is million dose, a higher dose than X-ray. So when you go take your take your X-ray, they tell you don't take your X-ray, you can cause a cancer. But when you have a cancer, they tell you uh, <laughs> take a million dose higher. You know, so it's there is no common sense. You know, and also about uh, surgery. Surgery is just a spreading malignant cells around and biopsy too with needles and knives. And we don't, you know, cancer, when we have too much toxins in the body, then body to prevent, you know, intoxication will form the basket. And actually tumors are the baskets. So body to protect himself will put all these toxins into the baskets. Means when somebody has cancer, blood is overloaded with toxins. And better we do some cleaning instead of just cutting, you know. And uh, very important to say, when you're sick and you go to the doctor to get your medications, you know, but it's important to understand that medications has nothing to do with your recovery. When you recover and you think that you recover because of medications, no. Because, you know, your body can recover, you know, without any medication. Uh, medication is just masking the symptom and it's not treating the cause. You know, fever is just a symptom. Coughing is just a symptom. And bacteria are friendly to us. Bacteria are not causes of diseases. Bacteria are friendly and they come to our body when we have toxins, to eat the toxic, toxic waste. You know, bacteria are helping us. And we kill with antibiotics bacteria and we actually cause more problems. So instead of killing bacteria, you just clean your body and start eating good food, raw food, and you will actually, in this way, get in one or two days well, instead of on one week on antibiotics. And um, my recommendations, eat mostly raw food, avoid all animal products, drink plenty of clean water, breathe deeply, very important to breathe, breathe deeply because this is also a detox program and there is one course, Art of Breathing course, which is an excellent course for breathing and I really recommend highly. Follow the sun cycle means sleep when it's dark, you know, from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. You know, we produce melatonin, which is a very important hormone, cancer-fighting hormone. And my recommendations, 
Eat mostly raw food, avoid all animal products, drink plenty of clean water, breathe deeply. Very important to drink, breathe deeply because this is also a detox program and there is one course, Art of Living course, which is excellent course for breathing. And I really recommend highly. Follow the sun cycle means sleep when it's dark. You know, from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., you know, we produce melatonin, which is a very important hormone, cancer-fighting hormone. And it's very important to sleep at that time. And be outdoor and exercise. Thank you. Uh, we can, okay, we can start questions, but uh, we will just play three minutes, one video. Yes? Yes? Can I ask? Yes. Video, video. Let me video. No, no, no. Okay. Heart attacks, certain cancers, osteoporosis, diabetes. The major diseases of our society may be caused in part by what we eat. One of the physicians who helped me to understand why is Dr. Michael Clapper. I first woke up, so to speak, when I was working on the anesthesia service, learning how to put people to sleep. And I was seeing my patients for the next day's surgery for coronary artery bypass surgery in order to bypass clogged arteries in their heart. Because it was late at night, I drew the man's blood test. And when I took the blood to the laboratory and had it processed, I couldn't believe my eyes. Now, normally, this liquid layer floating on top of the blood clot is quite transparent. It's yellow, but quite clear. You can see right through it. The blood in this patient's tube, however, was anything but clear. The serum floating on his clot was thick and greasy white. It looked like glue. In fact, it stuck to the sides of the blood tube when I shook the tube. I went back to the patient. I said, Mr. Phillips, did you eat before you came to the hospital tonight? He said, yes. I said, what did you have? He said, I had a cheeseburger and a milkshake. <laughs> and when he said that, I realized that what I was looking at in his tube was all the fat in the beef burger, all the butter fat in the cheese and the butter fat in the ice cream and in the milkshake. And all this fat had oozed out into his blood and actually turned his blood fatty. Well, 30, 40, 50 years of keeping your blood very fatty creates changes in the blood vessels that are very dangerous. Over the years, arteries can become clogged with fatty material. Then a blood clot can form, blocking the blood flow completely. If the artery leads to the heart, the lack of oxygen can cause heart muscle to die. That's a heart attack. If the clogged artery leads to the brain, the patient has a stroke. The next morning, we took Mr. Phillips to the operating room, and I put him to sleep, and the surgeon opened up his chest. And from these arteries, he began pulling out yellow, greasy deposits of fatty material called atherosclerosis. You know, if you were to die of a heart attack, Yes. And it's the most common cause of death in the country today. My question is about honey. You have not mentioned the honey. Yeah, yeah, organic honey. Is it on the good side? Or not? Yes, oil. it's on the good side. Olive oil. Olive oil, cold pressed oils, coconut oil. All these are very important. They lubricate our joints, but not animal oils. Good oil you can find in coconut, in the olives, in avocado. And they're very, but please use cold pressed. Olives, coconut oil and olive oil are for me is the best. And your question was sorry, honey, about honey. honey. Honey, organic honey means not processed. <coughs> okay, you can uh, you can use instead of sugar. So when you make your juices or smoothies, like you blend, you know, your spinach if you want to get, for example, you go to the gym instead of taking all these poisons from the boxes. You just melt, uh, soak your almonds in the evening, wash them in the morning, put in a blender, put spinach, raw spinach, put some broccoli which is full of proteins or magnesium or calcium, put some flax seeds, put some banana for a good taste, put some dates. I usually use dates, but you can put also honey instead of sugar, and you don't use sugar at all. Yes. Excuse me. Yeah, the fruits, which is available nowadays, which is coming from America, Chile, yes. is only six months old. Yes, I know. Yeah. You know, all these fruits, yes. First of all, I say we can do what is the best in the certain cir circumstances. Take what is less evil. So, it's less evil to take this apple than other. But, 
you know, usually because pesticides are full uh, of, of uh, I mean, they're acidic. So in order to neutralize them, we need baking soda. Soak your fruits before consumption in the water with two spoons of baking soda, and you will neutralize some of uh, some of uh, pesticides. It's not the best, but you always look for organic. There is a veterinary organic shop. There is Katif shop. Uh, Katif vegetable market is excellent Thursday morning. Really, you can find the best carrots in Dubai. Yes. Yes. You talked about detoxification. Yes. How can we naturally detoxify our liver? With juices. Ah, uh, liver. Liver. Liver, you know, I recommend coffee animals, you know, washing the colon with the coffee solution, which I have on handout, but now I don't have. Maybe I will leave my handout to the desk so people can, you know, pick it up. Uh, so I have four pages where I recommend what is good to eat, how to treat terminally uh, ill people, and, uh, but how to treat liver, I also can, there is my mail you can get and I will send you liver cleansing with simple uh, apples and some, yeah, vinegar. Yeah, you have suggested about the juices and our uh, raw yes. juices. Yeah. yeah. But how a diabetic patient can take that? Diabetic patient. Yeah. You know, diabetes, you can treat uh, in months <coughs> or two or three. I'm serious. You can even treat in a week or two. It's possible to treat. You need to be completely on a row. You know, if you are healthy, you can be 80% on a row, 20% like me on you know, some cooked food like baked potato, brown rice, some cooked vegetables, a little bit. But for sick people, it's important to be 100% because they need all these enzymes. So, uh, how, what, what is the wrong? Diabetic. Diabetic, yeah. So, but for diabetic people, you know, you just get rid of grapes, figs. These are no no, and also decrease date. You you know one or half date is okay, or small piece of banana just to satisfy the taste. But avoid fruits. You know eat uh, vegetables. So you can find nuts, vegetables a lot. Can you suggest that they can take carrot juice? They can take you know, but carrot juice have also carbohydrates, so a little bit less. Put more celery, put more green vegetables. These are the most important. Broccoli, cabbages. What no yogurt. yogurt. No yogurt. This is milk powder. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My first question is to uh, this, uh, this is about the uh, uh, there was a recent news that there are some kind of toxins in cabbage that is uh, dangerous. Yes. What's your opinion about this? Yeah. You know, all these toxins, uh, you know, instead, many of you have gardens. Instead of gardens with the grass, you know, <coughs> just have small vegetable garden and put your vegetables in your backyard, you know. So you can have your tomato on just a small place. You can have your tomato, uh, parsley, you know, few, few of them. But cabbage you can soak in a baking uh, soda and, and water to get rid of some poisons. And go to Kati. Uh, <laughs> no yogurt. No yogurt. Yeah. We need to take both fruits. Sometimes some of the fruits causing right. cold, yeah. like apples, bananas, yeah. oranges. Oranges. What, what, what is with that? If we take them, yeah. some of us are getting cold and bring diseases. From the apples? From the apples or uh, bananas, sometimes. Oranges. Rawa, Rawa. Oranges. Rawa. Yeah, infections, cold and... Uh, you know, I check double what you eat after your orange juice or before. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a throat infection, yes. a fever, for yeah. them, excellent, they are saying excellent question. You have to give them antibiotics. No, no, no. There is no solution. There is no, no solution. What no solution? The doctor said you have my, to give them. Yeah. 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 I'm a medical doctor. I don't give to, to my friends and my family. So why? My patient, I mean, my friend Renaud. He came, he had a meeting in Kuwait. He said, I'm very ill, I have very high fever, what to do? I have a meeting tomorrow, I have to go. I said, don't eat anything, or if you eat something, be sure that everything is raw. And second thing, take, because you're acidic when you're sick, take uh, in the morning one teaspoon with uh, water, glass of water, baking soda, one teaspoon of baking soda before breakfast and in the evening for two, three days to alkalinize your body. 
He got rid of fever tomorrow. He went on a meeting and his friend who was sick, he got antibiotics and he was sick for a week or two. So you get rid in one day in a row because enzymes are going directly there where they are needed. Men of that animals uh, don't uh, drink milk. What about cats and lions? Cats drink milk. Who? Cats. 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 She feeds her babies by them? Babies? Yes, all babies drink milk. But when babies have a teeth, they don't drink milk. They eat milk so at once. So it is essential for the babies to take milk? No, no, I said babies, they have a milk. After they get a teeth, you know, they have to chew the food, not milk. Natural milk, you mean? Even for the, uh, the, the people? For their babies, they should have natural milk, not? Of course, mother's milk. Mother's, mother's milk. milk, yeah. Yes. Mother's milk up to age two. Oh, very important to say, after age of three, you know, after age of three, our body starts to lose enzymes for digesting milk. So this is why you always have, you know, some bloating, some problems, some cramps, because of this, you don't have enzymes to digest this. Actually, I have a weird story that based on the Yes, good. I have one of my friends who have uh, come with this problem. Yes. And the doctor told him, the, you know, he asked for colon. And the doctor told him that he, they have to cut the colon yeah. and make uh, an open over here. Um, otherwise, he would die. That's it, you know, uh, also. And then he said, well, what, what if you make an open over here? Okay. He said, uh, well, your life will be longer for two months or three months. He said, well, I will die anyway. So I will not, uh, I will not do what, whatever it is. He went to another doctor and say, he told him the same. He killed the student. So uh, after, after that, he just went to raw food, all raw food, after consultation. And he is now very, very sick. Yeah, I have also But we have the tendency of the combination that we take a salad and then we go for the cooked food. Will that affect the digestive system like you are taking raw food which take, which will be easily digested? I am not sure which will yes. be easily digested and which will not be easily digested. Okay. If we have a combination of raw food okay. plus the cooked food. Yeah. Is it okay? Very good question. Because, you know, when you have at least 51% of, of the meal raw food, then you are getting your enzymes to digest all this uncooked food. So it's not, uh, you know, the ideal, of course, but 51% uh, is the lower, lower uh, uh, range, you know. So if you eat, put at least a little bit more of a raw food to be with your cooked meal. So and eat it before. Balanced diet. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, what about the refrigerated uh, raw um, vegetables and? Uh, refrigerated. Yes. Okay, you have to refrigerate them to to. Okay so that we can also to speak on this property. Let us try. Before concluding this, I would like to first of all thank the doctor for having valued this time uh, coming all the way from uh, waiting your here. Yes. So she has come back all the way and then she was in fact one and but I had spent while discussing with her about all this thing. Then she told me why not you arrange for a small uh, Presentation so that we can, I can come and do it for you, and uh, there's no problem. And I want more the people to follow this so that they can avoid uh, mainly this course is only in, in natural. It is only to live on uh, natural food and avoid uh, mainly the medicines and uh, other. We should live long. That's the only the natural. This is the only thing she wanted to tell in a with lot of examples and other things. I mean, this is really we are grateful to you, madam for this and uh, I should also here uh, thank Mr. Renal Trimble who was the one you know not only in every meeting every day we meet he is uh, teaching me this well I am partially I am on that but still I, I should confess that I am not on the phone but by seeing me you all know that anyway <laughs> so well with this uh, uh, I had the pleasure of uh, 
having Svajana and her husband, Nikvastanura, I worked for Aramco. And um, Mirzan's husband, I had also. I just like to say a few words. Uh, uh, in the short time that we got to know Dr. Svajana, uh, it was really a pleasure to know her and her husband. And uh, we basically fought, fell in love with her. Uh, because I was, like the gentleman was saying, uh, my habit was also uh, very much like eating meat. And I, and I couldn't even think of not eating meat. Uh, of course, my wife and my daughter, from when my daughter was born, she had tendencies towards vegetables and greens and didn't like meat. And I was forcing her because I, I felt like she wasn't getting enough protein. And uh, for me, the thing that broke the barrier was when Dr. Svajana told me that you really don't need that much protein and you can get a lot of that from the vegetables and raw vegetables. That made the point for me. And I just wanted to make that uh, clear. The other thing is the gentleman was saying, what choices do we have? Uh, sometimes I go to the cafeteria and I never notice that section of the uh, vegetables. <laughs> Before, and I went directly for the chicken and the beef and the... And so now I've found that you really do have a choice. There's always that section of raw vegetables and fruits and, and I found out that when I do eat that, I don't eat much. And, and I still feel really full. So a little bit of the salad and the fruit and the vegetables does it for me. I just wanted to uh, make a few points. Thank you, sir. Really brought us all together here, and then we should thank you for this, for giving an opportunity for us. I also should thank the doctor's husband, who has been a big support to the doctor all the time, and he is the rather, I mean, he is the success behind her, maybe I can say, for all for this presentations all the time. I thank all the participants for that. In particular, we have requested our CEO of our GCCIA to come here for this and he has been kind enough to come here and he has uh, he was telling that he wanted to hear this and he wanted to get the use of that. So I hope more people will come to GCCIA for the next week. <laughs> so uh, we are and I thank for all the people and uh, before we conclude I will request my DJ Mr. Sevi Sinov to give a small memento to the doctor for, uh, as a token of our remembrance and uh, Thank you for this nice gathering and uh, thanks to Dr. Stegzana. First of all, for our will to share her, her experiences in being a doctor, propagating not take medicines. This is one thing fantastic, except, okay? I am myself a diabetic, type 2. Uh, I got stented also recently. Doctor said because of stress and things like that. I am taking pills for good blood pressure, cholesterol, all these things. But now, and basically I am a vegetarian. But now how to become raw vegetarian? That is the problem. <laughs> 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 okay, we will try to do that also. And my wife is also somewhere here actually. <laughs> I never wanted her to actually attend this function. But already she is very rich on my diet. Okay. Now my life is going to be more miserable <laughs> And you made it so simple. And we are all worried, you know, MD, and how you going to explain how to sit for two hours here. Okay? <laughs> but no, you made it so interesting, the whole thing. And you made the basics very clear for all of us. I think it is easy to follow, but uh, it is for all of you. Okay? Most of us, we are about 40, 50 here, undergoing a lot of stress. And, uh, you know, this is a very nice session we had. And this going to definitely grow back. Thank you very much. And on behalf of all the people and on behalf of NCC, I once again thank you for a nice presentation. And as a token of our appreciation. Thank you all for making it a success. And special thanks to Mr. Tim Blake, who is our motivator. And I'll get to my car. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
Home. Because we are home, at home when we go back, we are going to have natural food. So let us try here. <laughs> 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 